Well, welcome back. You're watching the press preview with me this evening, Anastasia Duval and Roger Alton. Welcome back to both of you. Um, the uh, founder of Kids Company up before MPs today and uh, everyone describing it as a tetchy session at best. I it was think, an probably. extraordinary session, I thought, with these sort of claims and counterclaims, allegations uh, that there were that might, if were, were kids go to close down, then sort of South London would be in flames, uh, which has not happened. Um, and and uh, Camilla Bakmangalic sort of replying back. It was a very terse sort of uh, set of exchanges. And still, the, the odd thing is, here's this thing which did obviously a lot of good work, uh, but wasn't really run properly. Absolutely. And hasn't been run properly for 10 years. That's the thing, and what's almost surprising about this is still there isn't a complete loss of credibility, it seems, about Kids Company. I mean, it was very clear that whatever good work was being done, and as you say, there was good work, it was financially chaotic. Now, that is something that matters enormously. Well, sp specify, because the allegation is that wads of cash were given to young Yep. And we heard in the committee hearing mm. today mm. that some of that money paid drug pushers. Absolutely. I mean, that was just one of the controversies. Now, but I think that it would have been argued that that was a, a tactic that was used. It was seen to be something that was therapeutic. Mm. It's complicated, etc. However, the bigger problem, I mean, that was something that a lot of people think is a very questionable tactic. And actually, as we heard, drug users uh, were, you know, and drug dealers were being involved. It was more about the general finances of the organization, right. how it was governed financially, whether there was a trail that showed transparency and showed fiscal responsibility. Mm. You know, this wasn't sufficient to the point that actually the Treasury advisors wanted to stop money going to kids. Because the governance was mm. so poor, because whatever the, the aims so of poor. it were. And, 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 I think and charity is quite significant, Jesus particularly in this country. Exactly, you know? and this did mean other charities losing out potentially on funding. And what really mattered here was that it's not enough to have very charismatic and potentially very well-meaning <coughs> leaders doing good work. It has to be run adequately and it has yep. to be run, uh, run efficiently, particularly when we've got so much pressure now on funding for exactly if, these sorts of vital services. If it hadn't been taxpayers' money going towards this charity, would people have turned a blind eye, do you think? Would it well, have... it had a huge amount of private donations. Yeah. I mean, a huge amount. I think of that may donation. have been part of the problem, actually. I think that there was such a sense of this being a something that people didn't really understand. They thought it was extremely valuable, extremely hard and very didn't hard quite to know reach. What it did. Didn't quite know what it did. And I think there was an element of truth in that, in the sense that it was very difficult to understand just how difficult many of these mm. children's backgrounds were. But there was also an element of not pursuing actually mm. what was going on. That needed to happen. Mm. Hello, in just a moment, the press preview as we take a look at the morning newspapers. But first, our top stories. Scott, meanwhile, uh, this uh, Times story, the nuclear deal with China is a threat to UK security. Yeah, this is, uh, this is sort of on the eve of uh, President Xi's visit here next week. Um, quite indeed, what Mr Corbyn will do about that is going to be interesting. And um, as we know, George Osborne was over in China, was it last week or the week before? Anyway, um, uh, making, uh, getting China to come and build a lot of uh, nuclear power stations for us, which I think broadly is quite a good idea because I'm sure we can't afford it and um, China's got a lot of money to spend. This is quite a good exclusive story. Mm. Uh, the Times has got uh, security um, bigwigs saying this could be a real problem uh, mm. because China China, um, it, it will then be right at the heart of the sort of infrastructure of Britain. I'm yeah. not sure about that. They, they're not going to. The point being that China could use the technology that they practice in in our country in their own country. Is that right? Yeah, yeah not yeah. really. I mean, I think if, I mean they, the, the technology is 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 fine. I mean, they, they they've only going to yeah. bring it here because they've got it there. It's, uh, it's more about it's, I, in some ways you could say it's sort of money versus military. You've got yeah. a lot of military figures, in particular on the security level, saying, really, do we really want this kind of financial embedded nature with China? Yeah. And remember, these are plans at this stage. These aren't decisions that have been made. These the possibilities still and this isn't about China owning this is primarily also important this is the state as it were this isn't rich Chinese individuals it isn't about them actually owning these um, nuclear plants it's about them having part investment in it but ultimately it's this balance is this actually incredibly broad-minded of George Osborne Osborne let's say his name right <laughs> and, or is it actually just about turning a blind eye to, you know, never mind the human rights issues that are very seriously uh, talked about as concerns with China, but actually whether there is a risk attached. I mean, we hear that some other commentators say that in other European countries they wouldn't even consider this kind of investment from China. Mm. Now, if that's true, why are we, are we perhaps being smarter 
or are we perhaps yeah. being naive? I, I think I think the, so I think we're basically being sm um, smarter. And spooks do like to have a moan about things. I mean, we, we, we partly to get more money, and partly because they just do like to moan. And here they're saying uh, they have been consulted and said publicly that yeah. uh, China's intelligence services work against but UK you, interests. It, it, if that's true, then what on earth is happening? One thing you might say though is that you know this China is considered officially to be an intelligence threat. So is it mm. actually rather hypocritical to say, yep, you guys are an intelligence threat, but come in, come bring the money, the we're fine station. with that. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've had this dilemma mm. about mm. relations in terms of money and then diplomatic relations. Saudi Arabia is exactly, the reason. Exactly, on a much bigger level, is this another question yes. like that? Um, mm. uh, let's move on to a story. I know Roger is close to your heart. Certainly it's the... Uh, Sorry, if you could pull up the whole page, it's quite yes, interesting. Whole, you want both of them, if it, I want both things. Quite, quite, well, the first, the, the lead to the page, the Mail has been a very keen campaigner against um, uh, the Leveson inquiry, the Leveson law, and state regulation of the press, mm -hmm. as indeed am I, and I hope all right thinking people. Um, and that this is a report uh, done by a, 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 a sort of lot of quite good lobbying group of, for, for, for free press, and they say the Leveson law of state regulation is an appalling thing, which sort of is okay because nobody. Nobody takes any notice of it, and everybody's we, uh, the press has set up a thing called uh, the Independent Press uh, Standards Organization, and a uh, part of that. So it's not to do with state regulation, but it's quite quite a good thing to say that people don't like it. But the key thing I wanted to focus on was the uh, bottom story, which is the end of a four-year process of where journalists have had to stand trial. They've had their lives ruined. They've had to stand trial. This is not uh, to do with hacking. This is a uh, thing called Operation Elfden about payments to uh, public officials, mm. and a lot of public officials have been found guilty. The, uh, what, what's happened here is that public officials give a story to a paper like The Sun or the News of the World. Mm -hmm. All the times, so a lot of papers, and may or may not um, ask for a payment for it. And this is about people who've authorised payments, and they're now on trial. And what it shows to me is that the jury, the, pip the British public, mm. and this is the uh, last of many trials, actually want news, and they believe news is an important thing, and they don't want to jail journalists. And the other by the by thing here is the sheer cost of it. Mm. The yard says 14 million, putting everything else, it could be 30 million of these various trials. It's an awful lot of money. And I, this is a great day for these two guys and a great, uh, and in fact, a great mm. day, for, I think, for the press and uh, press freedom. Mm. Interesting. Um, lots more still to come, including, we've mentioned him already, haven't we? But uh, Boris Johnson hitting the ground running in more ways than one. Hitting being the option, back in a moment.